वेलकम फ्रेंड्स आई एम डॉक्टर जे जूलियट जोसेफिन जॉय professor of physics from hindustan college of engineering and technology in this video i am going to explain content effect content effect statement when a beam of high frequency radiation x ray is scattered by a substance of low atomic number the scattered radiation consists of two components one component has the same wavelength as the original incident ray and the other has a slightly longer wavelength this effect is called the compton effect the change in wavelength corresponding to scattering angle of 90 degree attained in compton effect is called the compton wavelength when a beam of monochromatic radiation such as x rays or gamma rays etc of high frequency is allowed to fall on a fine scatterer the beam is scattered into two components one component having the same wavelength and frequency as the incident radiation this is called the unmodified radiation other component having the lower frequency and higher wavelength compared to the incident radiation is called the modified radiation this effect of scattering is called the compton effect when a photon of energy e is equal to h nu collides with an electron of scatterer at a uh, at rest the photon gives its energy to the um electron in the scattered photon will have the lesser energy and lower frequency lesser energy and lower frequency that means it a uh, higher wavelength compared to the wavelength of the incident radi incident photon since the electron gains energy it recoils with the velocity v this effect is called the compton effect and the shift of wavelength is called the compton shift thus as a result compton scattering we get unmodified radiation scattered photon and recoil electron in compton scattering the collision between the photon and an electron is considered then by applying the law of conservation of energy and momentum the expression for compton wavelength is derived that is lambda minus lambda dash is equal to h by m not c into 1 minus cos theta lambda minus lambda dash is the change in wavelength this can be written as del lambda that is equal to h by m not c into 1 minus cos theta from this equation we know that this change in wavelength is purely based on theta that is theta means angle of scattering but one thing this del lambda that is a change in lambda is not depending upon wavelength of the incident radiations and nat nature of the scattering substance here some cases first case when theta is equal to 0 you have to substitute there del lambda is equal to h by m not c 1 minus cos 0 cos 0 is 1 1 minus 1 is 0 therefore change in wavelength is equal to 0 change in wavelength is equal to 0 means we know the scattering is absent that means outcoming radiation has the same wavelength or frequency as that of the incident radiation from the experimental part we got output as a single peak that is a then we have to see case 2 when theta is equal to 90 degree a change in wavelength h by m not c 1 minus cos 90 cos 90 is 0 
therefore 1 minus 0 is 1 you will get del lambda is equal to h by m naught c there's a change in wavelength del lambda is equal to uh, 0.0243 angstrom unit you know h is a planck's constant 6.625 into 10 to the power minus 34 m naught is a constant 9.11 into 10 to the power minus 31 c value is the velocity of light we will get this value actually uh, this wavelength is called the content wavelength which has a good agreement with the experimental results we will get one more uh, point b okay next we will see uh, when theta is equal to 180 degree if you are substituting 180 well, cos 180 is minus 1. Therefore, 1 plus 1 is 2. 2 times h by m naught c. Therefore, change in wavelength is 0.0486 Armstrong unit. Here, uh, shift in wavelength is found in maximum. From the result, we got this one, this result. Then application, it is used in the detection of ionizing radiation. It is used in the scintillation detectors to detect gamma rays. Content scattering is also used in astronomy. It is used to the treatment of cancer. Thanks for watching. Thank you.